once you have established your crop in the nursery, of course, the next big consideration will be the water. Because uh, um, the spinach crop has to, uh, to get water so that it can be able to grow and can be able to grow profitably. And therefore, water requirement is also is very important. And here we are looking at uh, irrigation. And the next year we are looking at is rain fed. And also we, we look at the water quality. And uh, when you are looking at uh, irrigation, we are looking at um, maybe you are near a water source. You must be, for irrigation to happen, you must be, you must be near a water source, a permanent water source, or maybe uh, you may be having a permanent water source like a borehole. And uh, permanent water sources, you are looking at maybe a dam, a river, a lake, uh, or maybe, uh, of course, a, a, a pan where maybe uh, water is collected, uh, a collection pan uh, that has water throughout. Uh, and then we are looking at uh, even, um, we may have even project uh, that is a uh, community project water uh, that uh, is permanent and it is allowed for crop irrigation and so forth. And therefore, once you have all those uh, water sources, then irrigation becomes feasible. And here, when you are looking at the, uh, when you are looking at irrigation, there are many, uh, there are many, many methods of irrigation that may be at your disposal. And one of them is uh, overhead irrigation using sprinklers. Uh, spinach crop is a crop that uh, can tolerate, uh, unlike maybe something like tomatoes. Uh, spinach is a crop that can be able to tolerate uh, sprinkler irrigation. Uh, so here we are talking, we are, we are, we are talking about, uh, about the over, overhead irrigation. Uh, also, we are looking about drip. So once you have uh, the method of irrigation, maybe you have a dam or maybe you have uh, some water. And here maybe you are looking at uh, either the water may be limiting or maybe the labor may be too expensive. That's when we are looking at uh, the drip so that uh, uh, you can be able to minimize the water. Because for the drip you find that um, if this is the drip line, spaced maybe uh, one foot, and then you establish your spinach here. So you're going to find this area there is no water that will be dropped, but here there is a hole that usually drops the water uh, directly where the crop is, and therefore minimizing uh, or conserving the water. And uh, you just open from the main tank, and therefore there is no labor in terms of irrigation, uh, where irrigation is concerned. And uh, apart from this, this we also have furrow, furrow irrigation. And here, in terms of furrow irrigation, we are going to find that uh, uh, you can be able to to have a water source such that once you pump water from the uh, water source, you can have water draining like that, then drain like that, such that you can have water at the furrow with the water going this way. And then this is one trench, you can have maybe a long trench, and then you have the spinach planted along the furrow. Similar thing, uh, once water goes this way, uh, we have the main one here, the main water canal here, or the main furrow here. Then this furrow goes into that line. Then once it reaches here, then you open here, then it goes to this other one. Once this is watered very well, you close, then it goes to this other one. So that is a furrow irrigation that can also be, uh, be done in this respect. And also we have basin, basin irrigation. And here basin irrigation, is basically the same thing that is usually done in uh, onions. And here we have your land organized into basins. You have your land organized into basins. Uh, there may be many depending on the size of the land. And then you have the water now that comes now from the main canal, uh, from the main forest. This, this is still, this is still furrow and uh, basin irrigation. These are the basins and of course the furrow that will bring the water. So the water comes, this and then there is an opening here and then this basin is fed. And here of course uh, we have uh, your spinach crop planted, uh, uh, the spacing. Uh, and of course the spacing that we are, we are talking about, uh, the spacing of 30 centimeters square. 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, so planted here. And then once this is fed, you, you close here, then close here, 
and water goes into this into this basin. Once this is done, you close here, open here, then water comes. Then close here, then water will come into this basin. Once this basin is fed with water, you close here, you open here, then water goes into this basin. So once this is fed, open here, then water still comes, uh, feeds this. You close here, of course, feeds this, then close. It feeds this, then close, then water goes down until uh, the final uh, the final the final bed so once it it it, it uh, feeds the final uh, the final basin then of course you can close here and then you can proceed if, if if you have other basins so once the whole farm is fed then you close the main canal and of course uh, the the main canal uh, uh, the water you go to the main canal or, or into the main river or of course you just close uh, the water pump Irrigation is usually uh, complemented by the rain fed because once rain is available, especially uh, when uh, it rains, uh, you are going to find at that moment you are not going to do you are not going to do irrigation. But you may find in some areas where rain may not be sufficient, and therefore you have to complement the the rain the rainfall with the irrigation. But you may find some areas where rain is sufficient. And therefore, once you plant, you may not need the irrigation. Of course, those are high altitude areas where uh, the rainfall pattern is uh, predictable and also the rainfall that usually uh, uh, the area receives is uh, reliable. And therefore, uh, that is done. And of course, the other part is water quality. And this mainly depends on uh, the irrigation water. It may not be rain fed, but it's usually the irrigation water and mainly uh, what we can call uh, the river, uh, the, 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 the permanent river water source. Because uh, the river is coming from higher areas, and those higher areas you may find maybe they may be uh, some urban establishment, and uh, of course uh, the urban affluent may be coming to this river. And you may find maybe there are other farmers that are growing upstream and upstream they may be growing the same spinach and uh, some of the diseases soil diseases such as root rot may get into this water and once you irrigate with this water it goes into your land and therefore it is an important consideration and one thing you do is uh, you can check what is uh, being grown in the upstream so that you are able to know uh, what kind of challenges you may get once you grow the spinach crop the other challenge you may have is, uh, you, I mean, the other thing you may do when looking at water quality is uh, you look at uh, other farmers around your locality who are growing the spinach and the challenges they are getting so that you know beforehand um, uh, what to expect. But of course, uh, we have uh, water testing. You may test your water mainly to know the pH in which your, uh, which your water has is uh, under uh, the water testing labs are going to advise if maybe the pH is too high or too low, they are going to advise uh, what you can do. But basically, if uh, this water, maybe it is used for domestic, domestic use, and also the water is used for uh, animal, uh, animal use, and uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, affluent, or maybe it is not, uh, in this respect, it's not dirty water, uh, or maybe polluted water, then it is still water that is good for irrigation. But basically, those are the consideration in terms of the water quality. Uh, you may find also for spinach, you may find some instances where uh, some uh, nematodes. Nematodes are insects that usually attack the spinach, especially on the roots. And uh, they may come through the irrigation water. So even the testing may also test for uh, such aspects as a uh, nematode, the concentration of nematode in such water. One of the ways we can be able to, to, to check whether the soil have enough, wa uh, enough water, uh, usually scratch the surface. For example, just, you just remove uh, uh, some section of the ground, you just, you just remove the, the top soil on the cover, the covering soil, then deep down you can grab the soil, then you can hold it with, it with your hand like this. If it holds together, it has water. But if it crumbles, then it will mean uh, it lacks water and you need to add more water. 
For example, as you can be able to see, it's not crumbling, uh, meaning uh, the water is sufficient, but still not very sufficient because when you put some pressure on it, it crumbles. So this particular soil needs some, uh, needs some water so that uh, the plant can still continue growing.